Little fun fact about me. Riding controls a huge part of my mental health. And whenever I don't get to ride, I get, uh, there's something Kanu Reeves said a while ago, like you get withdrawals and it's a problem. Well, more of a problem for me. The cool thing about my page, I don't know if you know, I have absolutely zero sponsors, no bosses, no managers. I edit all my videos myself. I have absolutely nobody telling me how to act, what I should post. This is all just done by me. My only boss is Daddy YouTube. And so I have things like I can't swear in the beginning of my videos. Or you can't post wheelies or uh, I think you could post some moderate speeding. That's been fine from what I've found. But yeah, other than that, I can really post whatever I want. And so I'm going to be honest with you. I was having a bad time last night. Last night, I waited all day to go for a ride because it was too hot to go for a ride during the day. And right as it started to cool down, just enough to be able to go comfortably for a ride with gear on, we got hit with a massive rainstorm out of nowhere. And because of that, I had one of the worst nights I've had in a while got totally just yoinked by Ohio weather and I just it upset me and I'm like I'm 22 years old I feel like I should have like outgrown this like angsty phase that I'm still I feel like resurges every once in a while and I felt the need to go edit a video of me like speeding wheelies and all this and I'm like why like why why do I keep doing this like I know that's not what I want to post I, I think I'm at my best when I'm hanging out with friends and making content with them and editing that and posting that because it's the most interesting stuff possible it's engaging the watch rather than just watching like when I watch content of someone speeding through traffic i get bored of it because i'm like i can just go do that myself i don't need to watch someone doing that but yet i still felt the need to make that i'm like why i don't get it and so my last video is probably my least favorite video i've ever posted i'm like making it was fun uh editing it was fun i cannot tell you the amount of kids i meet they're like you got me in the bikes man like I'm getting my first R6 like next week and I'm like, I, I feel so much responsibility on my shoulders to carry that weight of, of getting people on the bikes for the right reasons. When I first got a bike, I got it to get away from people. I got my first bike during, right before COVID. And I just remember going on the loneliest rides and I ended up not fulfilling what I wanted to get out of bikes. Favorite part about riding is the people, is the people that you meet and the things that you do and the places that you discover, all of that is exactly what I want this page to be. And so I'm not sorry I posted that, but I'm just angry. I'm just like, why Like, why do I feel the way that I feel? Anyway, I'm swapping out the H2 today because this thing is overdue for its turbine service. So I'm swapping out the H2 today for my MT-07 and hopefully I can get back to going on nice chill rides because I, t I changed the oil on this bike, but it still needs to get the turbine serviced as part of its first service. I love this bike, man. I think it's awesome, but I miss going on my chill rides, and so it's gonna be nice to get back in the MT-07 for a little bit. A lot of people have been asking me about to, a lot of people have been asking me to like review the H2, like my thoughts on it, and it's like, it's great. To be honest with you, the speed is not much more than like any other leader bike. Marginally faster, I raced an RSV4 and beat it pretty easily, but it's like, is it worth 10 grand plus over any other leader bike? Probably not. If you like the extended swing arm and that's like, it makes maintenance easier and easier access to oil changes because that's another benefit of this bike. And you don't mind the extra servicing that you have to do on the turbine. You have to get it usually done professionally. It's fine. It's, it's a good bike. Go for it, dude. If that's, what, if that's what you like. If you can afford two of them, then I say buy it. I bought this bike in cash. Um, I originally wanted to finance it because it's like the most expensive bike I've ever owned, but I'm like, I'd rather just get it in cash and let's save way more money in the long run in their life. Oh my God, my mood just instantly got better as soon as I'm back on the bike. See what I mean, dude? It's like so angsty for what, dude? I'm 22, you think it'd be past that shit already. I can't let one bad day ruin my whole week, but it's just like, and honestly, bro, like there's no pleasing the biker community at all. Like I get it, like, oh, the book talk, dude, the book stuff, <laughs> the book talk stuff, I, I can't believe the extent to which it has gone. And I almost, I almost play myself, dude. Like, I didn't see any of this stuff until I started posting it. And I, I posted some stuff on my ex. I bought her books. I was like, okay, like, I didn't really understand it. I was just like, whatever. I'm going to support her hobby. She seems to like it. Whatever. I, I don't really care. I'm always like, when you're trying to be a good boyfriend, you just try to be supportive of, of your partner's hobbies and whatever. And I, like I said, I didn't understand it. So I was just like, okay, cool. Bet. Do what you got to do. We got some good views. It was, it was all good. We're all, all chilling. And now I see these dudes going on the internet trying to riz up excuse my language there we're trying to riz up these book talk girls and it's just like stop bro i can't i can't take it anymore and even the regular motorcycle content's gotten stale and i I'm like i don't even know what to post anymore uh, 
I missed a Harley rider, probably heading to the Harley dealership right here. Thank God this is not an H2R and actually has a radiator fan because it is too hot out today. I mean, he's air cooled. I don't know how he's, how he's, how he's surviving. Man, people say this bike's too heavy. I, I swear to God, it's the, that's the number one thing people say who don't own this bike. They're like, yeah, it's too heavy. It's not. <laughs> it's like, nice bike. I'm like, you too. Got some nice music going on with that bike. Nice little beat. Oh, is he going straight? Oh, man, that sucks. My buddy. Oh well. Sorry, Mr. Hartley, man. Oh man, this thing's fun, man. I like the H2. Yeah, people say this bike's too heavy. It's not. It's really not. Especially now I like ripped off a piece of the exhaust. It feels a lot more nimble. Obviously a little less so than like the V4 or the S1K, but dude, it's it's fine. It's totally fine. This bike has so much hype around it. I want to like dispel some of that because it's like, yeah, you know, definitely corner this thing. It's, it's fine. Probably not as good on the track, but the owners, I think, I have a theory, the owners try to keep up this mystique about this bike because they are afraid of the values dropping off, and so they want to try to keep their values up by lying about this thing. Yeah, the owners are making up bullcrap about this bike because I think it serves their own values and, or it serves their own interest, and it's just a straight up lie, it's just like any other leader bike. And where's the MT? Somewhere around here. Also, I literally just, I know I just said, that I posted reckless stuff, I'm still gonna post it again, you know why? Because I hate myself, and I like uh, fueling that a little bit. <laughs> I literally know it's gonna be like the first comment on the video. You just said you didn't want to post reckless stuff, and now you're showing me going somewhat fa I won't, probably won't post the peak of it, but like I'm still gonna post like an edit probably or something of it. And uh, first comment's gonna be, you yeah, thought you just did. I'm like, I don't literally do not care. Suck my nuts. All right, well, I gotta be the most unlucky person known to man because I've, I, I've fucked it up. There is a little piece right here. Look at this bolt that's sheared off. Look, I had plenty of, plenty of slack left. I was uh, trying to adjust this piece that goes in right there. I was trying to adjust it so that way it would, uh, this throttle wouldn't get stuck anymore, which to be fair, it works now, but that is a safety hazard and I can't have that. It's, ah, fuck. So now it works perfectly. That's hilarious. Works perfectly. Yeah, but it's not safe to ride because that shouldn't do that. And I don't, I'm not even entirely sure about the risks of that. But obviously, you can't ride it like that. So now this bike is going to sit for like another month. And the registration's expired on it. So I couldn't even ride it even if I wanted to. $7,000 investment sitting here. Needs a turbine service. Don't know when they're going to be able to get to that. But it's obviously something I can't do myself. Change the oil myself. Can't do the turbine service. So need to wait a couple days on that. Or week or so whenever they can get around to it because i can't do that bit they need to do that lastly v4 if i can even get around to it i don't know i'm not trying to run into a bike that is way more expensive than my own oh here's the 916 sp2 it's pretty cool it's pretty cool yeah bent rim not safe to ride on or at least ride on consistently because i just rode on it the other day three of my bikes here all of them sitting waiting on some sort of part i love motorcycles dude so much fun. hate when something goes wrong with them. I own four motorcycles. Every single one is having an issue right now. And I just, I, I, I can't believe, like, I can't just have one bike that is fully functional. My S1000, by the way, is the quick shifter isn't working. It, like, randomly turns off sometimes. And I'm starting to think that the motor is ticking louder at, at, at each time I take it out. And so that's really cool, too. Middle of the summer, and, uh... I really thought by having more bikes, you know, yeah, obviously you have problems, but I thought that I'd always have at least one that's, like, fully functional. Nope. All of them having independent, it's like, something going on. Something that's happening that makes it so I can't ride it, or, like, when you do ride it, it's like something's unsafe or not working. So, yeah, dude, just not having a good time. I don't know, I could ride that home, but at the same time, I rode it up here to get it serviced. I'm probably just going to call an Uber. Not having a good time, brother. Ugh, dude, like I can't, I can't even describe to you just how frustrating it is. When I buy my fifth bike, right? Because that's the only thing I can see that's gonna happen from the. Just sucks too, because the weather's gonna be so nice out today and tonight. Next time I buy a bike, I mean, this one's still 100%. I was about to say, next time I buy a bike, I'm just gonna keep it 100% stock. This one is still virtually 100% stock. It's just getting its last piece of service done, which I can't do myself because it needs a special tool that I don't own. Cool. The 07 should have been the easiest bike to work on. Probably just should have left it alone instead of doing all this convoluted fucking bullshit. Instead, now I have to sit here waiting on another part that's probably going to take a week or two to ship. Probably just going to wait for him to get back, figure out, touch base with him, 
and then Uber back home because, yeah, this turn signal about sums up everything that's going on right now. Here's our quick shifter part. Don't know how it plugs in. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go uh, go home. Probably ride the S1000 tonight. Cross my fingers it blows up and I can get more content out of it. The specialty tool that Jason thought we didn't have, I have. So. Oh, okay. Look. Yeah. yeah, good news and bad news. Good news is this, I was educated a little bit on how throttle cables work. I've been spoiled by electronic throttles, so this is the first cable throttle I've ever had to work on. So this piece is a piece that snapped. Um, had plenty of thread left, had no reason to snap, but it did. Oh well. This is actually a push cable, so they put this on here for safety regulations or whatever, because there's a spring on here is actually a thing that snaps the shut. This is just here in case anything gets stuck. So when you fully throttle it out, it just snaps right back in. This is why the throttle is still working just fine. The current plan is to rip this out completely and order a new throttle cable eventually, not anytime soon. Because it works completely fine without. Yeah, it should be totally fine. If the throttle, if that throttle cable ever snapped, we'd obviously have a lot bigger of a problem, but it's totally fine. Don't know why that has so much play, but whatever. Bad news is, they're not going to be able to get to this today. So I'm just going to leave this here. I called an Uber. It's going to be here in like 10 minutes. I'm just going to Uber home. Also, good news. Uh, Clint literally just informed me that the H2, they have the, the tool that can turbine service the H2. No big deal. Um, should be done sometime next week and I can get this bike back. I should probably get ahead on that and order a Fender Eliminator for this bike. So that way when I get it back, I can have a nice little fender eliminator for it i don't have to have this giant thing hanging off the back of it so this bike will be back sooner rather than later which is good that bike is um whatever and the v4 obviously is still on its way back so feeling a little bit better but yeah it still sucks that i have to uber home and i'm stuck with one bike <laughs> so that's not what i wanted to do yeah tragedy man why is like every video like something always goes wrong i swear to god every time i go riding all right well i'm gonna get out of here go home edit this post it <laughs> whatever Look at me, motorcyclist, having to go home in, in an Uber, in a car. God damn it, man. Like, dude, more bikes, more problems. I thought by having more bikes, I would always have a bike to ride, but... Empty garage, empty garage. So kind of like how I started out this video, I just gotta say, I love riding to death. Absolutely. My favorite thing to do in the world. I mean, just two wheels in general. Even look at this bicycle over here. I love riding around on this thing, too. Anything without a cage, enjoying a beautiful day. I, I don't care. And the reason I'm so upset about my bikes, you know, I've, I've hit a rough patch, I think, this past spring and early summer. And hopefully by the end of the season, you know, I have all my bikes here lined up in a row. But it's just the way this, the, the time has been going, I just haven't been able to have that opportunity yet. And just, it's obviously upsetting because I always want to ride. It, 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 like I said, it's my favorite thing to do. And when my bikes aren't working, it causes me pain. <laughs> Because I, I just want to ride. Hopefully this thing stays functional enough for me to ride until I get one of my other bikes back. But who knows? If this thing blows up on me, dude, I am just going to launch it. I'm going to pick it up and just go yeet off a cliff. Because I am not buying another BMW again. <laughs> I can tell you that. I'm probably, as, some, as soon as I get one of my other bikes back, if this doesn't have any more problems, I'm going to hit them up again. The dealership about the quick shifter issue, the way it, what's going on is I'll just be riding and I go to like upshift and this just doesn't work at all like it's just not letting me shift i get a downshift not working either um some people were saying it's the clutch sensor which this is adjusted perfectly i don't i mean i've tried like doing the trick where you like hold this all the way out and that doesn't fix it so it's not the clutch lever it's not a, the common issue that people get this is its own very weird issue people act like i don't know that much about bikes but i've been riding for five years i very much know i don't i gotta be careful i don't know everything but i know a good amount and i know a lot about the bikes that i own and so yeah yeah like i've gone through the the common fixes and problems i've done some basic google research on what's going on with this bike trying to figure out what's going on like self-diagnosing so i can try to get this thing functional and back as soon as possible i've done my due diligence man like Trust me, I'm trying here. And meanwhile, while all this is happening, I'm kind of having my own, like, self-confliction, I guess, of what I want motorcycle content to be. The modern crop of motorcycle content, to me, has grown incredibly stale. And trying to navigate around that has been difficult. But I like the idea of being able to make content without sponsors, without having to, uh, like, being able to rely on ad revenue, but also trying to find a way to make good entertaining motorcycle content and uh i'm probably not gonna make any money from this video even though i'm saying that but 
it is what it is. Sometimes you just gotta make a video that you wanna make and not something that I just make for, for money. Anyway, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys uh, sticking through me on this. And Depressing time, for sure. I own four bikes and only one of them is here. And this one is not even 100% like where it should be. Frustrating for sure. Is it gonna stop me? Hell no, I'm gonna go ride today. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna go take a shower. There's a big bike meet tonight. I'm probably gonna film it. Might film with this camera because it's been a while since I've been recording videos with this camera. I still have to fix my microphone, but I'm gonna be with my friends anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And with that being said, appreciate you guys watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.